It was a sad and bloody end to a scandalous and tragic chapter in Rock's history. The 21-year-old former Sex Pistol whose look, charisma, and attitude helped shape punk died in the prime suspect in the murder of his 20-year-old girlfriend. Hey, I'm Ryan Downey, and on This Forgotten Day in Fright in 1978, Sid Vicious was arrested for the murder of his girlfriend, Nancy Spungen. A Sid himself called the cops from New York City's famed Chelsea Hotel and allegedly confessed later that day, I did it because I'm a dirty dog. Sid and Nancy were punk rocks Bonnie and Clyde, the blueprint for Kurt and Courtney, embroiled in a high-stakes romance later immortalized by Gary Oldman and Chloe Webb in the appropriately visceral biopic. Following the dissolution of cultural gay crashers and the Sex Pistols after a disastrous two weeks of U.S. touring, Sid went solo with Nancy as his manager. Despite a steadily worsening drug habit, the couple continued the Pistols' path of iconoclastic culture jamming via lowbrow tunes, combative performances, and rejection of the middle-class malaise burdening suburban kids like Nancy. Sid filled his months out on bail for Nancy's murder with suicide attempts and a stay in Bellevue Hospital. Years later, Sex Pistol singer Johnny Rotten revealed that Mick Jagger quietly put up the bail that rescued Sid from Rikers Island after an assault charge put him there for 55 days. The same night he got out from that one, Sid Vicious overdosed and died in his sleep. The documentary Who Killed Nancy shifts the focus from Sid on the drug den riffraff with money as motive. Sid had just been paid $25,000 in royalties for My Way, his undeniably autobiographical take on the Frank Sinatra classic. So did Sid kill Nancy? Was Sid's overdose an accident? Was it suicide? Or did somebody else administer that lethal dose? It's the most important part of the Sex Pistols legacy to you. Leave your thoughts in the comments and hit us on Twitter at CryptTV with the hashtag ForgottenFlight.